Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to our vegetable garden. Did you know that fall is a great time to plant garlic? Typically what you do is you plant the cloves in the fall and then harvest nice sized bulbs the following summer. Now you can still start garlic in the spring, but you might not get the large bulbs that we're all after. And you know, we all love garlic, right? It adds so much to cooking and growing your own garlic is very simple. So I'm going to go through the steps today and you'll be all set. So here's what you need to know. There are two main types of garlic. There's soft neck garlic and hard neck garlic. With the soft necks, you get a whole lot of cloves in a bulb, but the cloves are usually pretty small. And as their name implies, you can braid soft neck garlic bulbs together after you've harvested and dried them. The hard neck varieties typically produce large cloves, but fewer cloves within a bulb. And we really like garlic and we have really had good luck with the hard neck varieties. So that's what we're growing this year again. The other thing that you might be familiar with is elephant garlic. Now it's not technically a garlic, but it is related to garlic. And they grow quite big stalks and large cloves. And the cloves typically have a more mild, pleasant flavor. And we really like those as well. But for today, I'm going to plant hard neck varieties, German porcelain, which is a variety we've grown for a few years now, and we really love it. And then we're trying a new variety, at least new to us, called Metechi. You might be wondering where to get garlic bulbs for planting. Since we grew garlic this year, we set aside some bulbs to divide into cloves and plant this fall. If this is your first time growing garlic, I recommend purchasing certified disease-free bulbs from garden centers or online sources. You could also purchase an organic garlic bulb or two from your grocery store and plant the cloves from those. Then, when you harvest your garlic crop next summer, remember to set aside some bulbs for your fall 2024 planting. Let's talk a little bit about bed prep. I like to gently loosen the top few inches of the soil to make planting easy. And the reason I say gently is because within our soils, there are all sorts of beneficial microorganisms that live at different levels within the soil. So rather than taking a shovel and completely turning over the soil in the bed, I like to just push my spading fork into the soil, wiggle it back and forth a little bit, and then lift it out, move it a few inches over, wiggle it again, and so on. And that way I'm not mixing up the different levels, I'm just loosening those top few inches of soil. It's a good idea to add in some bone meal, which is an organic soil amendment that helps the bulbs develop a good root system. Bone meal is high in phosphorus. That is represented by the middle number on a fertilizer package. So you can see the package near the spading fork says 4120. That middle number is phosphorus. So you can tell that is high in that nutrient. So the first number, just in case you're curious, represents the amount of nitrogen, and the third number represents potassium. But for garlic, I'm really focusing on phosphorus. Prior to planting, you're going to want to separate the cloves within this garlic bulb. Now this is a German porcelain that we grew for our last crop. And look at, it only has four cloves on it and they are huge. And so you can see why we like this variety. But the easiest thing I've found for separating them is to use your thumbnail and just run it up where you can see the separation between the cloves. And then you need to just kind of push on a little bit to get it starting to separate. And then you can pull the cloves apart. Look at the size, that is one clove. Wow. You'll notice that cloves have a pointy end 
and then the end where you can see that the roots were coming out back when they were growing. So you always want to plant garlic cloves with the pointy end facing up. I'm finally ready to plant the cloves. Again, pointy end up, and you want to push the cloves down into the soil until there's about two inches of soil above that pointy end. And you want to space your cloves about six inches apart in all directions. Once you have your cloves planted, make sure that you label your plantings, especially if you're going to grow more than one variety like we are, and then just push the soil to close the holes. The next step is to put a thick layer, usually about three inches of mulch over the surface of the soil in your garlic bed. What that does is it cuts down on the amount of frost heaving that occurs during the winter months. And you don't want that to push your garlic cloves up and out of the soil. So this is a very important step. Now, if you're wondering what all of this is, the other day as we were cleaning up some of our garden, we used our chipper shredder to break up a lot of the corn stalks and other things. And we're going to use that as our mulch for this bed. And then I'm going to water it down just so it doesn't blow off because we've got a windy day today. Now when it comes to mulching materials, you could also use grass clippings from your lawn if you don't use weed and feed or other types of herbicides. You could also use shredded leaves or straw. So I'm just weighting this cover down. You can see it's pretty rough chopped material, but it'll work great. Basically, I'm putting a little quilt over the bed to protect those garlic cloves. The bulbs will form a nice root system during the winter. In early spring, you'll see the garlic plants start emerging through the soil surface. It helps to push the mulch aside so it doesn't inhibit the plant's development, especially if you're using grass clippings because they tend to mat together. When the soil temperature reaches about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the soil microbes will be able to start breaking down nutrients for the plants. This means you can fertilize your garlic planting with a diluted fish fertilizer, which is high in nitrogen. Do this two more times at two week intervals. Water the bed on a regular basis and keep up with the weeds since they will compete with your plants for moisture, nutrients, and space. If you're growing hard neck garlic, you'll probably notice something odd in the summer. The plants will start sending out stems, which are called scapes. If you were to leave them in place, they will turn into flowers, which will take energy away from the development of the garlic bulbs. Once each scape has formed a complete curlicue, clip them off the plant and remember to use them in cooking because they are absolutely delicious. Soft neck plants won't form scapes, just so you know. How do you know when to harvest garlic? Wait until the lowest three or four leaves turn brown. Here in our Zone 5B garden, it's usually in early July. Gently lift them with a shovel or a spading fork and move them somewhere to dry out of the weather. When the roots, stems, and skins are papery dry, you can clip off those roots and stems and store the garlic bulbs in a cool, dark place. Okay, that's everything you need to know for now, and I do promise to give you updates on our garlic patch from time to time. Now, as usual, I'm having to shoot this video a little bit early, so you have the information you need before you plant your garlic. It's good to do it 
after a frost before your ground freezes solid. And we do have some weather changes coming up in the next few days of this week. So we should be just fine. But yeah, it's a warm day and I'm not used to planting garlic in a t-shirt. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. Happy gardening.